this is a quick uh, refresher on how to do a what if analysis. A what if analysis comes in quite handy to look at sort of conditional changes. If you do this, what might happen? If you want to achieve that, what should you do? It's a, it's a very interesting function in Excel that you can use for a variety of different occasions. And I'll show you a couple of um, examples. One would be how much do you actually need to pay on your mortgage in order to get something done? Um, what kind of stock returns would you expect? And uh, what could you change in order to take care of that? And what, how much break even, or what would be the break even that you would need? And how would you um, know how to price things, or how many customers you need to get, and so on and so forth? So let's get to it. So, in the very first example, suppose somebody has borrowed $200,000. So let's change the numbers too, right? So let's say you borrowed. $300,000 to buy a house. And uh, right now, with the mortgage rates as they are, suppose you have to pay 4% on your borrowing, and you're going to pay it off in, let's say, a 15-year time period. 15 times 12, basically 180 months. So over 118 months. And you want to know how much is the payment going to be. So you could say payment is equal to, there's a function called PMT, PMT, and then it says, what's the rate? Now, given that you're paying per month, you would say, my rate is, my annual rate divided by 12. And they're saying, how, and the next question they're asking is, how many months do you want to pay it over? And you say, all right, I want to pay it over 180 months. And then the third thing is, how much money have you borrowed, which is your present value? What's the price that you've paid right now? You said we've paid $300,000. And that's it. And then close the brackets, and you enter it. And you say, all right. Uh, actually, I did make a tiny bit of a mistake. You'll say, if I look at that it says not by two but by 12 right not by two months and basically thinks it's biannual or uh, 12 months and then enter so they're saying if you were to borrow three hundred thousand dollars through the bank at an interest rate of uh, four percent per year uh, and you take 180 months 15 years to pay it off you should budget in about $2,219.06 every month to pay it off. Now, of course, you can change the formatting and say, all right, this should be in dollars. So we'll just convert that into dollars. Uh, so we'll say currency, um, that's in dollars. And as is this, so interest rate is in percentage. So you can right click, format cells, and you say that's in percentages, and then your months, well, there you go, 118 months. So, now that you've got that, suppose you say that, I don't know, uh, I would like to pay off the house in, suppose, you know, I can, you know, I, I think I can afford to pay $2,500 a month. How long will it take me to pay it off? So you're paying a premium on what you owe. And the question is, will it reduce the number of months? So let's try it out. So what we'll do is we'll go to data. And under what if analysis, which is right on there, the ribbon, go to something called gold seek. So we're trying to do a gold seek. We're trying to seek out a goal. And they're saying, all right, which cell do you want to play around with? And we say that, well, I think we're going to pay a premium. So I want to look at this cell, C5, which is your payment. How much can you pay? Oh, I think, well, I think I can pay $2,500 every month because you're paying it out. Make sure you put it in as 25, negative 2,500 because it's going out. And they're saying, all right, which cells would you like to change? 
we want to see how many fewer months it will take us in order to pay it off. So from 180, we'll say we want to change the number of months it will take us to pay it off. If we're paying about, I don't know, uh, 2219, suppose, so that's about uh, $281 more every month, right? So something like that. Um, and we click on OK. And it tells you that if you were paying $2,500 per month, instead of paying it over 180 months, you could now pay it over 154 months. You can't really pay it over 153.5 months. Well, you could possibly half through the like halfway through the month, you'll have it paid off. So, simply put, you would say this is if you were paying um, $2,500, this is nothing but is equal to 180 minus whatever you have. So, 180 was your original plan set 15 years. It, now you could actually save 26 and a half months of payments. Now, 26 and a half months of payment is basically you can save, you can basically sort of raise two years, a little bit more than two years worth of payments on a house if you were to pay another $281 extra per month. And that's the beauty. So you can uh, play around with these numbers or on the other hand you should say that you could say that well let's say if I were to you know, <clears throat> understand uh, that this is what I can pay and I would I can only pay let's say fifteen hundred dollars per month as so it should be um, negative fifteen hundred dollars per month and I want to see how much I can borrow in order to make ends meet so that I can only pay $1,500 per month and I want to still pay it off in 153 months. So, and it says, well, if you want to pay it in 153 months, um, you can only borrow up to $180,000 if you have a $1,500 budget. On the other hand, you could say, all right, let's go back to 180 months how much should i be how much can i pay i'd say that well frankly speaking let's go back to what if girl's sake and we say what's our goal that how much can we pay we can pay a maximum of 1500 per month because it's going out again it's negative and how much can we borrow and let's see what it says says that well if your budget if you can only pay 1500 dollars per month altogether on your house you shouldn't borrow any more than two hundred two thousand seven hundred eighty eight point two two dollars that's what it says so it's it's a pretty nifty tool to understand how to play around in order to get things sorted now uh, here here's another one suppose you've got a um, stock and there's a very famous formula called the CAPM formula, which stands for Capital Asset Pricing Model, which looks at what is the expected return for your stock. And it has a few parameters, or nothing but variables that you need to solve it. Firstly, it needs to know what's the risk-free rate, which oftentimes is the rate at of a treasury, right? And then what's the market rate for the stock? What's the beta? And a beta for a stock is simply put, um, uh, you know, um, the rate at which the stock increases when the market increases and the rate at which the stock falls when the market falls. So the sensitivity of the stock to the market. And then you can calculate your total stock return as is equal to, so we'll just follow the formula, which is the risk-free rate plus the beta times your market rate minus your risk-free rate, which is known as the market risk premium. So how much the market rate is above the risk-free rate? And we close brackets, and there you go, you've got your stock return. So assume in this case, we want to say that, well, I want to do a what-if analysis. 
and we go to GoTeq and we want to set this cell, we want our stock return to be at least 10%. So we want it to be at least 0.1. And we want to know if we want our stock return to be at least 10%, what kinds of beta should we go for? So what kind of stock should we choose? Because you can screen the stock based on a beta. The question is, what should the beta be if I want a 10% return on the market? And let's say, let's click OK. And they're saying that if you do want a 10% return on the market, you need to get a stock or buy a stock that has 2.66% or 2.67% return or a beta because now you can use that to screen stocks. Now, of course, the um, uh, sort of um, the con for that is that um, if the market drops, it will also drop by 2.66 times the drop in the market, right? So there's the sensitivity. So you could play around with that. Now, let's provide one more example. Let's go back into this whole borrow thing. Suppose, um, well, we know that um, Disney just started its um, streaming service, Disney Plus, right? Something like that. And um, suppose Disney borrowed, um, let's say, $500 million. So, 500 million dollars and it's borrowed it at um, 4% the market and it wants to pay it off in suppose 10 years so that would be 120 months and Disney needs to know all right so I've got a monthly payment based on this of five million sixty two thousand two hundred fifty six dollars and ninety one cents per month. That's its interest payment in order to pay it off. It wants to know how many subscribers do I need? How many subscribers do I need? So suppose, so in order to solve that, first thing is, what are its fixed costs? So, first fixed cost is its interest coverage. So, it's equal to this number. Now, this number is a negative. We need to convert that into positive. So, we'll basically say is negative of this number. And we have converted that into a positive. Next, suppose they have employees that are working for them. Uh, employees and their the monthly costs, suppose they've got um, a hundred developers and another hundred um, sort of administrators, marketers and so forth. Just, just to simplify it. Each developer, um, so let's say developers and admins, and we've got 100 of each and each developer suppose gets paid perhaps $8,000 a month and the average administrator gets paid um, possibly $6,000 a month. We're just making up some numbers. So the total cost for the developers and administrators, assume that's all the employees that they have, is equal to, and we did something called a sum product, sum product of, so in this case, 100 times 8,000 plus 100 times 6,000. You can basically do that and that. And we do that and we say, all right, that's exactly the same as if we were to calculate it, 100 times 8,000 is 70, 800,000, right? And 6,000 times 100, so 6,000 times 10, 60,000. 
and 600,000. And then we say that, all right, we basically are paying 1.4 million dollars. So we are basically paying 1.4 million dollars. So suppose employee costs are equal to this number. So we basically just link it to the cell. Then let's say that every time you run, say, of course, the cost of a show, then in this case, they're starting off for a bunch of different shows like Mandalorian and all that stuff. Uh, so that also adds to the fixed costs, which would be, in this case, suppose you've got shows um, and you've got what? They've started off with 10 new shows and each show on average costs about um, uh, 30, you know, um, let's say, let, let's actually not um, worry about these shows because let's assume that the fixed cost of that they, the money they've borrowed is being used to fund all these shows and all that, right, the 500 million. Then suppose every time they're streaming the service, your variable cost, Variable cost is the cost that you incur only when you are using the service, right? Or when you're uh, offering the service. So in this case, variable cost on average to stream every show, which means server costs and extra load balancing costs and so on and so forth, might be for every every single show that you're running, might be about a mm, dollar, right? So every time a show is being streamed, it's costing Disney a dollar on their end to every time you're watching something, that's that's the cost. And I think it's higher than what they actually incur. Digital costs are very, very low. And the the average price for a Disney subscriber. Mm or let's say average subscription price price is six ninety nine. So the question is, see so we're working off one of the other. So we're trying to figure out Disney's borrowed this money, this is what they need to pay. These are its monthly fixed costs. Uh, these are its monthly uh, fixed costs for developing shows and running shows and doing all that stuff. These are the costs for its employees per month. And the um, variable costs are about a dollar a piece every time the show, every time a show is running and you know, for every subscriber per month. And the average subscription price is $6.99. So let's convert everything into dollars. And so format cells, and we'll say everything is a dollar. And so everything is set off as, let's say, not numbers, but currency. And everything is in dollars. Question is, how many subscribers does Disney need per month? Just before they start making a profit. So what's its break even? So number of subscribers per month to break even. And break even basically means before they start making a profit. And so in this case, the formula is very straightforward. It's nothing but your fixed costs divided by your contribution margin. So let me write that down. So the oops, fixed costs divided by your contribution margin. And your contribution margin is nothing but your average variable co costs subtracted from the average revenue, right? So in this case, and contribution margin, so contribution margin is equal to average revenue minus average variable 
variables. So once you've got that, it's very easy to calculate. So we know that your total fixed costs are is equal to the sum, so which is nothing but the total of this one and this one, or frankly speaking, you could have simply because they are um, adjacent to each other, so you can just pull them. Now, if they weren't adjacent and you wanted to add these cells, you would look, you should highlight one and then do comma, next one, next one, and so forth. But in this case, they're adjacent, so we'll just say that. All right, so sum of these two, that's your fixed cost, divided by open brackets because you're doing a um, we're using it as kind of an operand. So average subscription price, which is your revenue, minus your variable cost. And we close brackets and we say, there. Now, this is not in dollars. So let's, because you're saying number of subscribers, that's the unit is in dollars. It's just a number. And they also hold numbers because you really can't have a 0.89 people subscribing. So they're saying in order for Disney to break even so that they can pay off their $500 million that they have invested in building Disney Plus and its employees that you need to, they need to pay for, they need at least 1,078,841 subscribers per month in order to break even. Now, of course, we can just go back to what if and say, all right, let's now play with this what if. Let's go back to gold seek. And now we say that, oh, it's interesting. However, Disney is realizing that it might not actually get 1,078,841 subscribers. It's likely to get, so we'll highlight that, it's likely to get only a million subscribers. So if it were a million subscribers, let me make sure that I've got all the zeros right. They want to know how much should the employee cost be? So they want to reduce their employee cost because they've already borrowed money. They really can't do anything with the number of shows, but they can reduce the number of employees or increase the subscription price, something like that. So they want to say, how many employees would they need? Do you, think, do you have too many employees can they lean up the employee count oftentimes to to make ends meet and say okay so mm, it's said that something must contain a value um ah so in this case this is we know 1.4 million And let's run it again. So we want to set cell this to a value of one, one million. And we want to see if this changes. And it's saying, okay. So what had happened previously was because I was referring that to this cell rather than having a direct value in there, it was having a tough time figuring it out. So now it's saying that, all right, you can't really have 0.9 employees. So let's make sure that we format the cells to zero decimal places. What it's saying is if you only have a million subscribers and you still have a $6.99 subscription price, $6.99, you need to trim your employee count from a million to 927,743, which basically means it used to be 1 million and minus um, this one, and this is not in dollars, so I should also, or, you know, or your employee costs need to go from um, 1.4 million that you had to 927 million which basically means what's the difference this mi minus that which basically means disney needs to trim its employee costs its employee budget 
by about $472,257 every month. Now, of course, um, I was uh, mistaken when I uh, did this and or when I specified that we wanted to be it want, wanted this to be in whole numbers this um, this is your employee budget so it does not need to be in whole numbers so we'll just go back to it and we'll just say it's in currency mm, two decimal places and same thing out here it's in currency two decimal places and this is what they need to take. They need to trim their employee budget by nearly half a million dollars in order to work with a hundred thousand or one million subscribers with a subscription price. Now, on the other hand, if you say that, well, can they change the subscription price if they still have um one point four million dollar budget? So one four hundred. So let's try that. Go seek. We want to look at. We need these these many. You know, we can only get a million subscribers. How should we price it? Can we increase the price and uh, make that work? And let's see what happens. Click OK, and they're saying, "All right, if you actually want to." just have a million subscribers and you can't get rid of your employees or can't trim the employee budget, then you need to increase your subscription price from $6.99 to $7.46. This is why uh, I suppose, you know, companies such as Netflix will oftentimes run these break-even analysis and they'll say, well, a Netflix price increase is coming. And that's how they calculate these things, right? Just on a um, slightly more sophisticated levels with many more parameters and so forth. But this is what it's all about. Thank you.